Okay, let's talk about basic percent skills. And uh, nothing's more basic in terms of, or uh, with respect to percent, than finding the percent of a number. And we're gonna practice that by doing this problem in this video. 45% of 1 half is equal to what? Now, if you think you know how to do this problem, I certainly encourage you to pause the video and break out your calculator. Feel free to use a calculator. Cal you know, using a calculator, you don't have to equate that to cheating or like, oh, you know, I shouldn't use a calculator. No, absolutely. Uh, uh, use a calculator to help you with the calculations, but a calculator is not going to tell you what to do. You have to tell the calculator what to do, right? So if you do happen to get the right answer, which I'm going to show you here in a second, what I really want you to think about is your level of certainty. You know, were you really confident in the steps uh, that you took to get the answer? But uh, if you're a little bit lost or shaky here on percent, especially if there's a fraction involved, uh, I'm going to clear up that confusion here in just one second. I'm also going to leave you with some uh, follow-on recommendations to continue building up your um, percent skills because this is a basic prom, but there's other percent type proms that you're going to want to be familiar with. So we're going to get to that and more in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Well, you know, of course, I'll let you be the judge of that statement. It's a pretty bold statement. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But Basically, I have 100 plus different uh, math courses. I have um, courses spanning from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, shortly. All my courses have taken me years to construct. Very, very comprehensive. Again, I think it's one of the best platforms out there because I don't do little quick tutorial videos. I really get, in, get you into full immersion teach you the concepts really deeply, and then I teach you how to solve thousands of problems, most common problems you're going to be facing uh, at uh, the middle and high school level mathematics. I also have many courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're preparing for a test like the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, Alex, teacher certification, nursing entrance, there's a lot of uh, reasons why people study math outside of a math course. So if you're preparing for uh, one of these exams and you're trying to build up your math skills to pass, just go to my site, check out my full course catalog. I should have what you're uh, studying uh, your particular exam. If I don't, drop me a line in my contact form and I'll help you out the best I can. Also, I work a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you uh, are a homeschooler, have a great homeschool learning system. And then lastly, I help those of you who are just struggling in your math class. Okay, I could definitely help you out. So uh, the one thing, though, I uh, always like to uh, state in my videos, I mean, you're here at this video to improve your percent skills, but you're really thinking about math, right? You're trying to learn math. Well, if you want to learn math, nothing's more important than uh, taking great math notes. So over decades of teaching math, one thing's apparent to me, those students who take the time and effort to take outstanding math notes, they, these students almost always end up with A's in the class. They learn, okay, because note-taking is critical to your success. And then those students who just kind of blow it off, like I did back in the 1980s when I was in school, I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, I don't need to do that. It's more important for me to talk to my best buddies and, you know, uh, try to catch up with on my homework for the next class. And listen, I get it. I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but I am trying to tell you reality. If you don't take great math notes, you are going to struggle in mathematics, period, point blank, end of discussion. So if you're really serious about learning mathematics, okay, you're going to have to do the hard work by uh, taking great notes because that's going to keep you focused and engaged. There's just too much detail um, and skills involved in uh, the entire mosaic of mathematics. You just can't, you know, look and just kind of cram and things like that. So again, I really try to emphasize this message to uh, help those of you out there. Like you can learn about percent, but if you don't get this part right, then you're always going to struggle. Okay. So as you're improving in your notes, I actually offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include uh, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay. So 45% of one half. Again, don't be shy about using a calculator. And let's just review here how to find a percent of a number. So let's do something real uh, easy. 40% of, let's say, oh, I don't know, uh, 350. Now, I'm not going to do this uh, problem, uh, but I am going to explain the basic process here 
of uh, how to find a percent of a number. Okay, so the basic process is this. We want to take this percentage, here we have 40%, and we want to rewrite it as a decimal. So that's skill number one. Okay, you're going to have to go from percent to a decimal. Now, how do I do that? Well, let's look at 40% this way, 40.0%. Now, now, notice the decimal points right there. So to write this percentage as a decimal, all you need to do is move the decimal point two places to the left. So 40% uh, percent or 40.0% is equal to 0.4 as a decimal. Okay, because notice, again, I moved the decimal point over uh, two places to the left, it lands right there, so that's 0.4. So 0.4 is uh, the equivalent of 40%, 0.4 as a decimal. So that's the first skill you need to uh, um, know. Now, I'm gonna, this is a kind of a quick review. Again, I'm gonna leave you with some additional guidance here. Matter of fact, let me just leave you with some guidance right now. I have tons of videos in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist on my channel about percent, basic percent, more advanced percent prompts. So that's my first recommendation for you. So, if, uh, you know, if you want more practice beyond this video, check out uh, all those videos in my uh, playlist. Or better yet, just jump into like one of my courses, like my pre-algebra or algebra one course, I really thoroughly teach percent, because percent is an extremely um, important math skill that you absolutely need to know. Okay, so this is the first skill you need to understand is how to go from percent to decimal. Now, uh, another way to think of this is we're taking this 40% uh, to uh, get to 0.4. If you divide it by 100, okay, you'll also get to uh, 0.4. So those are two different ways. We take our percent, we can divide it by 100, which is going to get us 0.4, or we could just locate the decimal point and scoot it over two places to the left. So we're going to leave, we're just going to, I don't want to give you too much information on percent in this problem because it's a basic percent uh, uh, problem. Okay, so we'll just leave it like this. So the first thing we need to do in a problem like this is go from a percent to a decimal. So I just explained how to do that. And then the second thing is how do we actually, uh, you know, what do we do with that answer? So 40% is 0.4 as a decimal. So 40% of 350, how do I find the answer? Well, you're going to take that decimal and you're going to multiply by the number. So it's going to be 0 0.4 times 350. So the second part of this is you're going to take your decimal and then you just multiply it by the number that you're trying to find that uh, respective percent for. And that's it. So uh, now here the number is 350. The number that we're, we're dealing with is one half. So what you can do there is just convert that to a fraction. So one half, I'm sorry, convert that to a decimal. So how do I convert that to a decimal? Well, just go into your calculator, take one divided by two. Hopefully uh, all of you out there know it's 0.5. But if I wanted to uh, convert, you know, two fifths as a decimal, just go into your calculator. If you don't know how to do this, because you know, some of these fractions are pretty common decimals, but that's okay. Just go into your calculator, take two divided by five, and you'll see the decimal equivalent. Okay. So now that you understand these steps, and hopefully, you know, I explain this clearly, go ahead and try to figure out what 45% of one half is, okay? So what are you going to do? You're going to change that 45% to a decimal, okay? You're going to need to change that one half to a decimal, and then you multiply these together, and you'll get the answer. Okay, so I'm going to show you this now. So if you don't want to see the solution, go ahead and pause the video. But let's get to it. Again, uh, not a lot of work involved, uh, but you have to know what you're doing, right? So here, 45% uh, is 0.45 as a decimal. Again, 45 um, is uh, the same thing as 45.0%. So I could just scoot that decimal uh, point two places to the left, or I could take 45 divided by 100, and you get 0.45. And then one half as a decimal is 0.5. I can go into my calculator and divide one divided by two, or just know that oh, 0.5 is equivalent to the fraction one half. Now, I'm dealing with two decimals, so 0.45 times 0.5 is equal to 0.225, and that is the solution. Now, if you got that answer right, okay, I would have to definitely give you a happy face. 
Now, if you got that uh, answer correct and you knew exactly what I was talking about, in other words, you didn't, it, you got the answer, but it was kind of like guessing. If you're like, yeah, I think this is the answer, then I'll still give you a happy face because you got the right answer. But if you were absolutely certain in the steps to take, then I will need to give you an A plus, any 100%, and let's give you one star because this wasn't a difficult problem, okay? I give you more stars for more challenging problems, but, you know, listen, feel good about that, you know, percent is extremely important in mathematics. It's an absolute must math skill. It's just, you know, it's probably the most practical math skill uh, that we uh, we actually encounter percent almost every day. Just think about it. if you're watching the TV or on your phone, you're at the store, you see percent off, discounts, everything else like that, sales price, you open up your mail, you see uh, your credit card statements, APR, mortgage rates, you know, interest for car loan uh, percents. So we see this symbol probably, I don't even know, maybe like 100 times uh, per day in a 24-hour period, and we should know a lot about it. Okay, very, very common, and of course, it relates a lot to uh, finances as well. So first things first, let's get you to understand basic percent uh, problems like this, and um, but you want to move on to more advanced stuff. So again, I'm going to uh, suggest that you check out all my additional videos on percent in my pre-algebra playlist on my channel. But let's wrap this video up. Now, if you like this video, if it helped you out, if it was a good little review for you, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for a long time. It's a great platform for someone like myself who is passionate uh, about teaching math. My goal is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way so you can learn it and move on with your goals, okay? So I have a lot of uh, videos on my uh, YouTube channel organized from basic to advanced math, but my best math help will always be found in my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.